The death of a beloved icon is always heartbreaking, but what's left behind at their scene of death can often illuminate their internal struggles, and in one case, catch a killer. For many millennials, Aaron Carter was their first crush. Carter made a name for himself and the aughts with hits such as I Want Candy, making tweens the world over swoon. Sadly, Carter would go on to struggle with addiction, and his relationship with his family became increasingly fraught. He once told Vlad TV his parents apparently swindled him out of millions. Carter's personal issues only continued through 2022. In September, he lost custody of his infant son, but was in the midst of fighting to get him back, as he revealed to the son. He also denied that he was struggling with substance abuse. In November 2022, the rapper was found unresponsive by his housekeeper. He was in the bath, seemingly having drowned, per TMZ. He was 34. Carter's death scene offered more questions than answers. A later TMZ report revealed that the singer was found with cans of compressed air and bottles of prescription medications by the tub. Before Adele, there was Amy Winehouse, the soulful songstress whose refreshingly down-to-earth, unpretentious personality charmed the public. Like so many women in the spotlight, Winehouse frequently generated headlines for her personal life, as opposed to her innumerable talents. Of particular media interest was her substance use and eating disorder, which became tabloid fodder. Moreover, the singer was mocked relentlessly in the media. That was when things started to unravel. Her, her drinking had definitely increased, yes. Throughout the aughts, Winehouse was in and out of treatment and faced various legal issues. In June 2011, she canceled her tour due to ongoing personal issues. Just one month later, the singer was found dead in her London apartment. She was 27. Her cause of death was ruled as alcohol poisoning, though her brother insisted to The Guardian that she died from her eating disorder. As the Daily Mail reported, the singer was found dead with a laptop nearby. She had been watching YouTube videos of herself before dying. Forever enshrined in the pillars of popular culture via Gangsta's Paradise and the Keenan and Kel theme song, Coolio will always evoke nostalgia for millennials. In September 2022, the rapper was found unresponsive at a friend's house in Los Angeles after excusing himself to use the bathroom. After 45 minutes of CPR, paramedics were sadly unable to revive Coolio, and he was pronounced dead. He was 59. Although police initially stated that there was no drug paraphernalia found by Coolio's body, this would later transpire to be inaccurate. As stated in the rapper's coroner's report, there were three bags of drugs at the death scene, as well as drug paraphernalia, including burnt foil and a spoon with drug residue. Coolio died of an overdose of fentanyl, a drug that kills 150 in the U.S. daily. Just days before his death, he'd performed his last show alongside Vanilla Ice. Peaches Geldof was the daughter of Live Aid founder Bob Geldof and TV host Paula Yates. At age 11, Peaches lost her mom to a drug overdose. Tragically, her own demise would mirror her mother's. In her final interview, Peaches told The Spectator that people expected her to die young like her mom. That's the worst thing, the preconceptions. I'm going to die like my mother. She's going to end up like her mother. But Peaches left the interview on a hopeful note, stating that motherhood had positively impacted her life. In April 2014, Peaches was found dead by her husband. She was just 25. An inquest confirmed that, like her mom, she had died of an overdose of heroin, a drug from which she had previously managed to get clean before sadly experiencing a relapse. By her body, police found a syringe cap, a pair of black tights which had likely been knotted to facilitate injecting heroin, a burnt dessert spoon, and bags of high-potency heroin. In an interview with Build, her husband Thomas Cohen said that his wife was a wonderful mother in the early months of her son's lives, but suffered from a pervasive feeling of emptiness that she felt could only be filled by heroin. At the time of her untimely death, Adrienne Shelley had completed her film Waitress, which she also wrote and starred in alongside Carrie Russell. Somebody's agreed to let me make a movie again that never fails to surprise me. 
but tragically, Shelley never got to see the film's release. In November 2006, Shelley's husband, Andrew Ostroy, found her dead in the couple's New York apartment. She was 40. Initial reports from outlets such as the New York Post suggested that she died in an apparent suicide, with police noting that there weren't signs of a forced entry into the apartment. However, her family and friends were not convinced that Shelley had ended her life. Namely, she was known to be planning for another baby with her husband, with whom she had a young daughter and was reportedly excited for the future. A source told the New York Post, She doesn't drink and she was a pretty happy person. Everyone is having trouble accepting this as a suicide. Moreover, the cops did find something curious at the scene of death a large shoe print that clearly wasn't Shelley's. Despite this finding, police maintained that her death was a suicide. However, Ostroy dismissed such claims and was determined to seek the truth. Ostroy's refusal to stop fighting for justice led to the arrest of Diego Pilco, who ultimately confessed to killing Shelley in a botched robbery. He was sentenced to 25 years in jail. Grunge trailblazer Chris Cornell found fame in the 90s as the frontman of Soundgarden. Later in the 2000s, he formed supergroup Audio Slave alongside members of Rage Against the Machine. Sadly, Cornell struggled with depression and anxiety throughout his all-too-brief life. In a 2006 interview with Spin, he revealed that his mental health struggles were exacerbated by a bad PCP experience when he was 14, resulting in unrelenting panic attacks. In May 2017, Cornell played his final live show with Soundgarden in Detroit. Those present at the concert noted that the usually effervescent frontman didn't quite seem himself, reportedly appearing weak and forgetting entire verses to his songs. By the following morning, he was found dead in his hotel room aged 52. His death was ruled a suicide. The musician's scene of death offered some insight into his state of mind that night. Police found Cornell's famous sunglasses atop a messy bed, a guitar, and some prescription bottles, including anti-anxiety medication. The latter finding was at the center of much contention, with Cornell's widow, Vicky, claiming that the anti-anxiety drugs played a role in his suicide. Subsequently, she sued her husband's doctor for prescribing the drugs. The case was settled privately in 2021. Just over two months after Chris Cornell's suicide, Linkin Park frontman Chester Bennington, a close friend of the late musician, also died by suicide. Following Cornell's passing, Bennington had tweeted, in part, I can't imagine a world without you in it. I pray you find peace in the next life. For many years, Bennington lived with depression and anxiety and remained haunted by several instances of sexual abuse he experienced as a child. In a 2011 interview with The Guardian, he spoke about being triggered after seeing a childhood photo in his mom's house, saying, And then I remembered. Oh my god, I remember that stuff happening to me at that stage, and even thinking about it now makes me want to cry. No wonder I just went completely insane for a little while. That's, that's a part of my life, and it's been a part of my life since I was a very young boy. In July 2017, Bennington was found dead in his California home. He was 41. His scene of death contained numerous mementos that signaled his declining mental state. In addition to sleeping pills and bottles of alcohol, authorities found a handwritten biography. In his final interview, published by The Mirror, Bennington openly discussed his depression, but expressed a message of positivity, saying, I wanted to enjoy being a dad and having friends and just getting up in the morning, because that was a struggle for me. The untimely death of Glee star Cory Monteith hit fans hard. Monteith was an example of a functioning person living with substance misuse. That is, someone whose outward appearance does not fit stereotypical depictions of what a so-called addict might look like. In July 2013, Monteith was found dead in his Vancouver hotel room after he failed to check out on time. He was 31. It was later confirmed that he died of an overdose of heroin and alcohol, though other substances substances were also found in his system. The coroner's report revealed that the actor had a long history of substance use. He'd also had a recent period of recovery. In fact, the coroner noted that this may have contributed to his fatal relapse, due to his body's tolerance to opioids diminishing after a spell of sobriety. At the scene, authorities found drug paraphernalia such as spoons and needles, as well as bottles of alcohol. At the time of his death, 
Monteith was dating his Glee co-star Leah Michelle, who was devastated by the loss. In an interview with Elle shortly after the tragedy, Michelle said that she did not want people to remember the couple's romance as one blighted by substance misuse, saying, "...we had a full life, and that had lots of different details that will be ours forever, for only us to know." Sadly, Prince's death was one of many celeb deaths in 2016 that came as a major shock to fans. In April that year, he was found dead in an elevator at his Paisley Park recording studio at the age of 57. At the time, Prince was known to have been dealing with influenza, having had to cancel a number of shows. A coroner's report later concluded that Prince died of an accidental fentanyl overdose after taking Vicodin laced with a deadly substance. In all likelihood, Prince had no idea he was taking a counterfeit pill that could kill him. At the Paisley Park compound, there were all manner of unusual mementos that highlighted the singer's apparent state of mind in his final days. Investigators found various high-end skincare, makeup, and hair dye products on a messy dresser, a bag containing $5,400 in cash, prescription medications from Walgreens and CVS, and a vault with drugs and files inside. Prince's death scene exemplified the apparent duality of the singer. On the one hand, he was evidently preoccupied with retaining his youthful good looks. On the other, he was reportedly reliant on drugs to enable him to continue to perform and fulfill the needs of his myriad of fans. Throughout his illustrious career, Robin Williams was ever the tragicomic hero. The sadness that Williams imparted to even his most madcap roles was likely a reflection of the depression he struggled with for many years. In August 2014, Williams died by suicide at age 63 in his California home. The death scene painted a harrowing picture of the actor's final moments. Investigators found crumpled bed sheets, black sneakers, an iPad, antidepressants, and a bloodied pocket knife. It later transpired that Williams, who had been misdiagnosed with Parkinson's, actually had Lewy body dementia, a neurological disease that can drastically alter one's behavior. In Williams' case, the disease led to uncontrollable anxiety, stress, and insomnia. Speaking to The Guardian, the actor's widow, Susan Schneider, said that her husband's health had been gradually worsening in the lead-up to his suicide. She said, "...I didn't even know what Lewy bodies were, but I said, no, I'm not surprised. The fact that something had infiltrated every part of my husband's brain, that made perfect sense." Had Williams received the correct diagnosis, Schneider suggested that he could have been treated and lived. Lewy body dementia killed Robin. It's what took his life. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255.